What exactly is aiding and abetting? We've all heard of it, we're all curious. What are the penalties you could face? What are the defenses that you can assert? Today we're gonna to cover all of that and more. I'm attorney Sina Resvanpour. I cover legal topics, I explain them in ways that everybody can understand. If you're interested in that type of content, go ahead and click subscribe. Now let's go. So how can it be possible that someone who actually hasn't committed a crime be charged with the crime? Well, that's because in every state, including Minnesota, it's illegal to help either before, during, or after the commission of a crime. A person that helps in the commission of a crime is known as an accomplice. An accomplice is another term for someone who aids and abets the commission of a crime. So who qualifies as an accomplice? An accomplice is anyone who intentionally aids, advises, hires, counsels, or conspires with or otherwise procures the other to commit a crime. So for someone to be guilty of aiding and abetting, they have to act intentionally. They have to want to help either before, during, or after someone else commit a crime. The best way to discuss this intentional mindset is to go through an example. Let's use a bank robbery. Let's say that somebody robs a bank, calmly walks out, dressed completely normally, gets into a taxi, and the taxi drives off. Has that taxi driver intentionally helped this person rob the bank? Probably not. In this example, let's assume that the taxi driver had no reason to believe that this person just robbed a bank. Instead, they're just picking up someone who wants to get from point A to point B. Now let's change that example a little bit. Let's say that the bank robber gets to a getaway car. The getaway driver is a friend of the bank robber and they had talked about this, they had planned this in advance, and the getaway driver knew that his role or her role was to get the bank robber away from the bank to somewhere safe. So in the second example, the getaway driver has absolutely helped in the commission of the crime. They knew that it was happening and they helped after the fact get this person away from the scene of the crime and into hiding. So let's revisit that taxi driver example. Let's say that the bank robber again casually walks into the cab, taxi driver has no idea that the crime was committed, they start driving, they hit some traffic. The bank robber tells the taxi driver, hey, I just robbed this bank, get me the hell out of here, I'm gonna pay you extra, and the taxi driver says, I'm down, let's go. In that instance, the taxi driver has just basically gone from being an innocent bystander to aiding and abetting or being an accomplice to the bank robbery. So let's make one thing clear. Just because you're at the scene of a crime does not make you an accomplice. On the other hand, an accomplice doesn't necessarily have to take any overt action to be guilty. A jury can take a look at all of the evidence that's available and make an inference, basically make a determination on whether this person was present in support of the commission of the crime or whether they were just a bystander. So aiding and abetting or accomplice liability is very broad. Let's go back to that bank robbery example. Let's say that the getaway driver knew that this person was gonna rob the bank, uh, but expected it to happen peacefully. But things go sour when the person's robbing the bank and they pull out a gun and they shoot somebody or they kill somebody. Now, the getaway driver is actually also an accomplice to the murder or the attempted murder. So if someone's charged with aiding and abetting or being an accomplice, there are some defenses. Defense number one is abandoning the crime. So that means that the person stops supporting, stops giving help to the person that's committing the crime. That's kind of tough to prove because it goes to a person's mental state. Unless they actually said out loud and there were witnesses, hey, I don't want you to do this, you should not be doing that, or I'm not, I'm not gonna help you, I'm not gonna do this or that, then it's gonna be tough to approve abandonment. The second defense is prevention. So someone can take an overt action to help prevent the commission of a crime. A good example of prevention would be if the getaway driver was also supposed to pick up the bank robber. They were supposed to show up at their house and in the morning had second thoughts and never actually showed up. So if someone is convicted of aiding and abetting, they can actually be facing the exact same sentence as the person who committed the underlying crime. So let's say, for example, the crime is murder. In Minnesota, the maximum sentence is life in prison for first degree murder. If someone has aided and abetted first degree murder, they can also be facing life in prison. I mentioned this in an earlier video, but the maximum sentence for second degree murder is 40 years. Someone who is an accomplice or aided and abetted second degree murder can also be facing up to 40 years in prison. So let's recap. Aiding and abetting is when an accomplice helps someone else commit a crime. 
Their help can come before, by planning and preparing. It can come during the commission of a crime, or it can come after the fact, maybe by helping somebody get away. And there are some defenses to aiding and abetting, including abandonment and prevention. The potential sentence for aiding and abetting can be equal to the underlying crime that this person helped to commit. Now, I wanna hear from you. Leave a comment below. Let me know whether you think it's fair for an accomplice to potentially face the same sentence as the person who committed an underlying crime. Also, let me know if there's any other topics you'd like to see covered in a future video. I'm attorney Sina Resvanpour, and this is not legal advice. Thank you.